Amen. 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 I want to thank God for the privilege of uh, being in your midst. And um, a few pieces of information that I want to give to you should be taken very seriously. And that in your interest that in your interest when the minister that some pastor was talking was what happened to Moses it is that same Moses but God decided to punish his senior sister Miriam Miriam was the, the lady. She was grown up enough. She was about six years. Who God used, the Spirit of God used, to stand by the water side when Moses was to be carried away by the waters. And then with wisdom given by the Holy Ghost, she now talked to Pharaoh's daughter. It was that same Miriam when he now wanted to go against Moses. God punished him and gave him leprosy. And the prayer of Moses and the prayer of Aaron couldn't save any one of them. Is this same Moses that at a point in time, the appropriate thing, the acceptable thing, the desirable thing was for Moses to first enter the promised land and then go to paradise below when he had finished his ministry. But to show that God is not a respecter of persons and nobody is indispensable. You are not. What does that mean? If all these people singing in the choir decide to move away, to not change anything. If all of you decide not to come to Washman, it will not change the calling of Washman. Truth be said. Truth be heard. I am not indispensable. If I die, it will check the movement for a while. God can tell somebody, go and prop them up. And the person will come and the Spirit of God will move on the people that the person is speaking with. And the ministry will bounce back. So if I am not indispensable, you are not. What I want to say in this afternoon is in your interest. It's not in my interest. It's not in the interest of God. I want to tell you about these last days. These horrible days, the things that are playing, and then what you must know concerning the ministry, the things that are playing in these horrible days, and then the truth about Washman, and what you must know about the ministry. Let's bow down heads of prayer.
Then our Father, we want to thank you, Lord in heaven. Thank you because you are the almighty God and we are dust and ashes. If Abraham in all his obedience, the one that sacrificed his only son, saw himself as dust and ashes, that one that had that great calling saw himself as dust and ashes. We are dust and ashes ourselves. We thank you because you are the owner of the ends of the earth. You own the atmospheric heaven. The skies above the planet Earth. And then you own the second heavens, space, and all the positions, all the areas of the planets and galaxies. And then you live in the third heavens. Lord, you are incomparable. We thank you. Thank you because of your faithfulness. Thank you because of your almightiness. I come here, grandfather in heaven, with word of exhortation, word of uh, comfort, word of encouragement, and word of truth. And I pray that the things that are going to be spoken will constitute the balm of Gilead unto every soul, unto every spirit, to the old and young, to the new, and to the relatively new, and to those that have been there for quite some time now. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the son of the living God. Thank you for the spirit of God. Thank you for the word of God, infallible word. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your truth. It's infallible. It's the bottom line. Notwithstanding what we find in the present world, nothing changes you. Thank you very much. Thank you for answer to prayers. By the time I will be done, Lord in glory, let that be as usual, those fantastic things that can come from the bosom of the Father, those things that are completely incredible. Every good gift, every perfect gift comes from above. And let them come from above this afternoon. And let them not just rex on the roofing sheet. Now, I owe you responsibility. And that is the reason I come here. I owe watchman, watchman people a responsibility. And what is that responsibility? You know, tell them the truth, guide them into the way. But you know what? I cannot force any person. I cannot put a rope on your neck and drag you contrary to your will because it's not acceptable. It's not the will of the Lord. It is whosoever wills, let him come unto me. Whosoever that is malleable, that is the only person that you can shape and reshape and shape and reshape and shape the person into heaven. <clears throat> let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you about malleability. If you go to the building site, take that building that is across the road, the other side. Now, if you go there, you will find the concrete columns and concrete beams and all those things that, that are standing like these uh, steel columns. They are having iron rods inside them. They are having shippings inside them, cement and water. And uh, 
Now, those iron rods are malleable. You can bend them into a U. You can bend them into an S. You can bend them into a rectangle or a square. But there are some kinds of iron you cannot bend. Cast iron you cannot bend. So those kinds of iron are malleable. You can bend them. And it is your responsibility to elect the type of mind you should carry. If you carry a mind that cannot, that is malleable, that cannot be bent, that cannot be shaped, then you are not on your way to heaven. You will never get into heaven. I like to tell the truth. I'm a truth teller. And I tell it to everybody. And I, I don't, I, I tell it without fear, without favor. Uh, you people, some of you were in the meeting, and you go on the hill, you were there. And when I was telling the truth about Jesus, was I telling the truth as somebody that didn't know what he was talking? I'm asking. Somebody was beating about the bush. Somebody who didn't believe what he was saying. When I said in the presence of the governor that the prophet does not go to the king, or the king goes to the prophet, was the governor there? That tells you the kind of person I am. That's the truth. I didn't tell you to insult him, no. I said it to tell the truth. So I, I come to tell you truth. So make yourself somebody malleable. That is somebody whose mind can receive truth. And that truth is able to bend you out of your own, out of your own, out of your own views. Or out of some other views that somebody will have put upon you. So be malleable. So I come to tell you the truth because that is the business that God has given me to give to whosoever that will come along in the ministry of the watchman. Now, what days are we into? We are into days that I have no adjective to qualify. No appropriate adjective. If you say they are perilous, like the Bible says, you are saying, you are just saying, uh, you are just saying a small fraction of it. If you are, if you say they are dangerous, if you say they are polluting, if you say they are satanic, you are just saying the truth. There is not much, there is not sufficient adjective to qualify these days. But let's go to scriptures and. Uh, just three scriptures to to try to lift up uh, uh, the days into which we are and I'll show you why it is so. Tell you why we are in those days. And then I tell you the possibilities. Possibilities of such days. Possibilities. And the possibility can be your lot. That is, you may have even entered in, into those possibilities. Into those, those are damaging possibilities. So let's go to scriptures. In Second Timothy, quickly, chapter uh, three. Second Timothy, chapter three, from verse one. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Now. The word perilous is an adjective. It came from the noun form of it, peril. Peril means disaster. If somebody says, 
If you do that thing that you want to do, you are doing it to your own peril. It means that you are doing it to your own disaster. That the tragedy that will come upon you will not be uh, will not be quantified. If somebody says, "Don't do that thing," because if you do it, you do it to your peril. It's talking about tragedy. It's talking about disaster. So, that is what the apostle saw. He is not the person that it created the perilous times, the disastrous times, the consuming times, the mad times, the crazy times, the obnoxious times, the perilous times, the tough times. The times that you cannot explain. And he says, in such times, in, in these times, in these last days, he said, there are things that will be happening. He said, because of that, men will be lovers of their own selves. Listen, men will be lovers of their own selves. Tell me. Tell me children that love their parents now. Tell me children that love their parents now. This thing is playing. Children love themselves. And they don't want to know whether their mother or their father is dying. The father can be having hypertension. And these children are even born in church. And then... The husband so-called, the wife so-called, is a lover of himself or herself. It doesn't bother him whether the wife is dying. If you die, I marry another woman. And then the woman will be saying, if you die, I marry another man. And even if I am in church and there is no man coming to me, there are very many men outside that I can befriend so you can die. These are the times, these are the things are happening. Men will be lovers of themselves, and they will be covetous, they will be boasters, they will be proud, blasphemers, and um, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady minded, high minded, lovers of pleasure. At the time we are in, these are, they are the closing times of this world. That's what the apostle said. And we are in there. Take note. You need to tell yourself the truth. These are the times that we are predicted. The very times we are into there are the times that we are predicted. The times when, you know, uh, good, good is bad. And bad is good. The times of abomination. The times of abomination. In my days when I was growing up, I never saw any man that was befriending a man. And they go to bed. All such people that we knew, they were terrible individuals that would take young boys and then take them in and teach them immorality. All such people were nasty people in the society. And they were, uh, you know, they were, they were few. But at such times, in the days when I was growing up, I never heard that a woman would go into a woman. Never heard that. There were no such things. But today, lesbianism, today, Married woman to married woman, boy to boy, man to man, even man to beast. Yes, and it is man, marry man, man, marry man, and get a license in order to live together as husband and wife. And know, you know what they do? And then when they want a child, then they will get a woman, and then the man will bring one of the men that is playing husband. We bring sperm. And then that woman, which they hired, we bring egg. And then the sperm will be 
used to fertilize the egg of the woman. And the woman will be paired to carry the child. And when the child is born, you now bring it to this man a man. That's what has been legalized in the places. He's coming to Nigeria. He's here with us. Very long times. And it's affecting, affecting people. Now, the way you talk about, uh, the way you talk about the, the virus of immorality on the streets. Nobody cares. That is what they are discussing. That is what they are practicing. That is the talk. Television, nothing else. Billboard, advertisement, nothing else. Then, internet, wow. Nothing else. Facebook, Backbook, Instagram, Twitter. What the people are doing, terrible. Posting nude pictures. Listen to me. These are the days. I said these are the days. Days that will damage human beings. Damage their souls. Days that will expose them to possession of Satan. Listen to me. Somebody was asking me a question. Can, can Satan monitor many, many people? Can, one, can devils possess all the people in the world? I said yes. I said one demon can possess one billion people. One demon. You ask me why? Can the demon by locate that is it's inside this person? One demon. Inside this person, inside this person, inside this person. No, it doesn't have the power. Is a demon, can one demon be here in Lagos, one demon, and then be there in Los Angeles, and then be there in California, and be there in Enugu? No, it must be at a particular place at a given point in time. But how can he possess one billion people? You ask me. Now, it gets into one person and then gets into one person and then lives in that person and pollutes the mind of that person and that mind that person's mind is now is now metamorphosed metamorphosis and then metamorphosed into the mind of that demon when he has worked on the person and deposited everything he moves out and goes to do it to another person and he monitors this person, every person. If even though one, they are living in Japan and some are living in Philadelphia, listen to me, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need an aeroplane. In a twinkling of an eye, beam from Japan, it arrives in Philadelphia in the US. Did you hear me? It pollutes this person. And when the person has become completely polluted and the person has no power to change, change himself. He moves and enters another person. And now there are people that he can now re resident, resident on somebody. And that person will be an agent. And the person's activities and the person's wisdoms will be in the activities of a principality. And that is what they have done. Polluted many, many people in these very lost times. And then the Lord Jesus Christ in his day. He said, when, toward the end, he said, iniquity shall abound. Iniquity. What is iniquity? Lawlessness. Iniquity. Lawlessness. Lawlessness everywhere. Nobody bothers about God. Nobody bothers about right living. Lawlessness. Now, you can see where we are. Who is, who is interested in your well-being? Your neighbor is interested. I'm asking you. If there is anything that you will do to take even your intestine. You will take the intestine. Iniquity. Abounding. Iniquity. That is. Iniquity is. I don't know how to explain iniquity. That is what the Lord just Christ said in Matthew chapter 24. And then. And then. He says, because of that, the love of many will wax cold. Listen to me. Previously, 
When it was not like this, when we were at Olalaya Community Center, listen to me. People were coming to church and running. Now people don't come to church on time. Now people select the service they will attend. Am I right or wrong? That is the thing. Iniquity has abounded. It has affected many, many people. There is lack. As a result of iniquity, iniquity of people that are ruling, uh, people steal all the money, and then every place is patched. No job, nothing. Then, somebody that is looking for work, no money, now he's, he's angry. And she's angry. And then you are talking about God. Say, go and sit down. Don't tell me about any God. Don't tell me about any God. I want food in my stomach. And then, that's that. The next moment, whatever you can do to get it, you does it. Even if it means taking your hair and burning it. Ah, yeah, yeah. Can you see how people are missing in Lagos and missing all over the world, missing in Nigeria? Can you see how blood is flowing? Now, the Lord told me the other day that I'm going to carry out a seminar. And that seminar... It's going to be like Enugu on the hill. And I'm going to preach a message and it will be televised all over the world. And the title is that blood is flowing and blood is speaking. <laughs> blood is flowing and blood is speaking. Blood is flowing and blood is speaking. Listen to me attentively. Chebi, you say you are in the watchman. I'm a watchman. I'll tell you things. This day. So that if you want to be in this ministry, you better to take your bed and tighten your trousers very well. Because only such people can stay in this ministry and go to heaven. Not boys. Not kids. Not little minds. Listen to me. Little children don't do masquerading in my place. Because it has a lot of talisman inside it. If you want to be in the watchman, I will show you. The watchman is not, is not another congregation. You have been hearing it. You have been hearing it. Let me ask you. Is there anybody here that was uh, with me at Olalei Community Center? Raise your hand. Stand up. Shy. Oh, soldiers are no more there. Now, listen to me. Did you hear me say that to belong to the watchman is glorious and dangerous? I'll show you why I made that comment. Now, I'm just talking about the thing that the Lord said, Matthew 24. And now there is another thing that He said. Let's read it. And um, I now tell you. About the watchman, even in the midst of uh, all this. Matthew chapter 24, we are reading verse 7. Matthew chapter 24. And uh, we are reading verse 7. Remember that Jesus Christ was talking eschatology. Eschatology, what, what will come to pass. Matthew chapter 25 from verse 4. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that, that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, say that ye be not a trouble. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. That is the end of the world. Nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. Now, earthquake is happening almost on daily basis. And there shall be pestilences, cancer, leukemia, leukemia, and all the deadly things that have come upon the sons of men. And then all the diseases, diabetes. Diabetes can catch somebody that is six years old. Are you there? If we check, if we bring medical people and check every one of us here, now many people have one illness or the other. Pestilences. That is what was predicted. And you know what? Let me tell you something. You know what? Somebody had predicted in the 80s. And when I had the truth, I knew that this is truth. 
He said, because of the pestilences that are going to come, a time was going to come when preachers will shift emphasis. I don't know people who are running from pillar to post looking for miracle. I don't know people who come here only merry, merry, merry. Pray for me. I am sick. You are looking for, for, for healing. And you are looking for material things. I don't know people that fear the church. And then they do not know anything. They fear the church. And uh, they don't understand even the church where they are into. They don't understand the requirement. They don't understand anything about salvation. They don't understand anything about sanctification. If I say, who is genuinely born again here now? How many people can say, I am genuinely born? How many people here have a genuine experience of regeneration? Like I had. Relatively speaking, few. Relatively speaking, not many. Genuine experience. You know why I said that? If you have a gen if you have my the genuine experience that I had, that spirit that entered me, that made me to abhor sin, will make you to abhor sin. But if it doesn't make you to abhor sin, then you were not genuinely saved. That spirit that entered me, that made me to follow peace with all men, including enemies. In the village. Listen to me. In my, in, my, in my kindred. They are so scattered. And so in enmity. That nobody. Goes to this other person. As I am talking now. Only me. Only me will go to all the places. And eat food. No, but no other person. Did you hear what I said? And I'm not joking. So much enmity. People that have the same grandfather Hannibal. Is it not so in your village? Are there no brothers, same mother, some father that are in, are in court? Are there no people that are fighting over their prop father's property and over their mother's property? Are there no people that are killing themselves? I don't know the people that are selling their children in order to buy bread. I don't know the men that are kidnapping their cousins. Are you there? Yes. Now, these are the days we're into. So, pestilences will come and people will be running to get healed. When they hear it is happening here, when it is happening there, do you know what they did? And then they will, they will, they will, they will now help and spoil people that don't have, uh, don't have understanding. Listen to me. I'll show you from the scriptures today how God has arranged the people in church. How He has arranged it. The people that you need to respect. Listen to me. Number one person is who? What is the ecclesiastical name of the person you must respect first in church? The apostle. Yes. Then followed by who? The prophet. Then before you talk about um, evangelists and all this, and pastors and teachers. But now, people that have no understanding will run after, after evangelists and run after babes. Listen to me. I came from the UK and we spent a lot of time there from the UK. I came back and went to Angola. And listen to me, all ministers that are not watchmen people came from Monday to Friday. And they were listening to me. And they came for counseling. And I, well, the last day, counseling was up to 12 midnight. And there were some people that came and said, I am an apostle. I am a bishop. And then the person said, I want to start church. I said, now I want to start church. Can you tell me your experience? He said, a man of God, my experience is too, is too long. Tell me the long story. 
And I listened for one hour. At the end of the day, I found that the woman was only just born again. And they made her a, a bishop. And then another person told me a very long story. At the end of the day, I found that the person was possessed. And I told him that you are possessed. You need to be coming here. Don't make a mistake of starting church. He said, yes, sir. That the spirit that spoke to you is not the spirit of God. Before we came back. So, now, um, iniquity shall abound. Pestilences. And because of the pestilences, you'll be running. And then you will now not bother about the main things that will send you to heaven. And then the people that are attending to them will not bother about the main things. Listen to me. For me and for God, there is what is known as the totality of what Jesus Christ left behind. He said, occupy in my business. He I come. Now, you go to occupy in one over 1,000 of the business. Are you occupying the business? You are not answering me. If you occupy in one over 1,000 of the business that he left, are you occupying in his business? The totality of the business. Apostle Paul said in, in the book of uh, what? Acts of Apostles. I, give, I gave you the whole counsel of God. Listen to me, and that is what I stand for. I give you the whole counsel of God. I minister healing. Have people been healed at my hand? Listen to me, I'm asking you. As the people that have been there over the period, do I speak in tongues? Yes, the tongue that I speak, nobody can speak it. Then, you say you have a word of knowledge. You didn't, you didn't, you, who taught you? Who taught all these people? Who taught them word of knowledge? Who taught you the things? He's an apostle. Now, let me not go here and there. I'm confused at the issue. I am telling you that at these times, it is really very dangerous. And that you need to be careful. And God has seen that we will arrive at this point And yet give the ministry called Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. And then I want to tell you what to do with that ministry. And what not to try to do with the ministry. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. I'll read the ministry. I'll tell you briefly of how it started. And I'll tell you the status of the ministry. And I'll tell you what you have to do with the ministry and what you must not attempt to do. Did anybody listen? Yes, I said I will show you the ministry of the watchman and I will show you how it started and I will show you the status before God and then I will show you the things that you ought to do with the ministry and the things that you must not attempt to do. What is a ministry? God has given us a ministry of recovering the polluted church. Revamping, recovering the church, the universal church. That is restoration of the universal church. What is restoration? I, 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 I make an illustration. Let us assume that uh, these roofs, roof roofings are leaking, and the timber roof structure has gotten mot mot, and the ants have uh, eaten some of the roof structure, timber roof structure. Are you hearing me? And then the floor has already become having a lot of cracks and then a lot of holes. And then, and uh, let us assume that it has walls and the walls have cracked. And then the foundation is somehow 
and then you see that the roof, uh, the, uh, the, the ceiling, uh, because the, the roof is uh, leaking, now the ceiling is now spoiled. And then restoration, refurbishing, recreation is that you make the amendments, you remove the roofs, the bad roofs, and replace them with the good one. And then you patch up all the floor. And then the timbers, roof structure, first of all you remove the roof and recreate, use proper wood. Listen to me. Wood that is treated against termites. And then use them to do the roof, the roof, stru roof structure, and then put roofing sheets. And then make the amendment and repaint the house. That is restoration of this house. Now that is what God has given the watchman. He knew, he knew from time immemorial that there is going to come a time when the church, the entire church will have leprosy. And right now, the entire church, the person, places where you call church, some of them are not churches. Listen to me. Listen to me. Any place that is started on the basis of fighting, is, Jesus is not there. If you like, believe. If you don't like, don't believe. I am not begging anybody to believe. When I, now I told some people at lodges, and that is what I tell you now. You know what I say? When I reach heaven, whosoever that I see, I take. I can't, can't kill myself. If I reach heaven, who I see, we take. For reaching heaven, I'll be there. Amen. Listen, I will be there. You ask me, how, how come that you are sure? I am sure of my, the life I live. I am sure of the life I live. Yes, that's why I, how I, I'm sure of how I live with my wife. I'm sure of how I live with my children. You can go and ask them. And with uh, people anyway, go and ask. So, now, whosoever we see in heaven, we take. But meanwhile, there is a lot of sickness in church. A lot of commotion. A lot of offenses. A lot of offenses. A lot of sin. A lot of immorality. Now people in church. People in church. A girl is posting nude picture to a man. Or you are, you are into a WhatsApp chat. It shattered me up. It shattered you up to sin. It shattered you up to immorality. It shattered me up. That's what we hear in the, from the mouth of people who claim to be Christians. Who told you that you are a Christian? Who told you that you are a Christian? And then you go to the internet, YouTube, and you watch every nonsense. And you open the um, um, videos, the home videos, um, um, what do they call them? All those, uh, every person is an um, uh, actress, actress, actor. And then they are showing their nude pictures, and they are kissing. And they are showing their bobs, their breasts, their buttocks, and everything. And you are polluted, and you are liking it. From, listen to me. I went to visit somebody that was sick. Listen to me. And then the person didn't go to church that day. I went to visit him. And it was a, it was a washman person. And then as I reached there, behold, he was washing African magic. He was so sick that he didn't go to church, but he was not sick to wash African magic. Now you are washing, and you say you are Christian, and you are you are you are talking, you are talking, you are sending messages to America, and then saying the things that you don't understand, the things that you don't understand. Listen to me. If, for instance, you heard that I said this place, I'm giving an illustration. Oh, are you following me? Don't misunderstand me. I said from today. Now, there will be no charismatic hour here. Now, the next moment, you take your phone prrr, to people that are in America. 
you are not a Christian. Who told you that you are a Christian? Ah, come and hear what he said. He said that there is no charismatic hour. This man has backslidden. Now, let me ask you. Do you, you don't have opportunity to ask me why. And then you went to town with what you don't understand. Church is in trouble. And the Lord saw it ahead of time and gave the watchman the ministry. On the 16th of March, 1979, at number 25 Richard Street, about 6.30 to 7.00. The Lord said unto me, this man, I will bring you into that for which I have called you, and that without measure. And later on, now he began to give me the details of what the thing, what the thing is all about. And here we want to read now the thing that we are reading every day. Isaiah 49, 5 and 6, and now saith the Lord that formed me from the womb to be his servant. To do what? Now, if Jacob did not stray, why are you talking about? If somebody did not stray, why are you talking about bringing him back? Do you really understand what you're saying? To bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, Is it a light thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob? Tribes of Jacob means the churches. The, the, okay, if it's not, if it's not so. Why is it that at Angola, while before I reached there, somebody, some people have been given my picture that this is the man that will take over and restore the church in this Angola? People like PFN. And they wrote me, ask the Dacian pastor, and we went there. And then, you know what? And then one man. Has already uh, seen a picture of this man. And then he was going to the street and our people were making, uh, making evangelism. And then some other people, a Nigerian based church, was also doing evangelism. And they gave him an uh, invitation. And then, and then the picture he saw in the invitation was not the picture of the man. Now our people were also doing evangelism and gave him invitation and uh, there was no, no picture. So, and the meetings were running at the same time. And so when the time came, and then he said, let me go to this other place because the picture here is not the man that I saw. This is real. This other day. And then as he went, and then I came and I appeared in the pulpit. He began to say, that is the man. That is the man from the gallery. Listen to me. And then he said to me and said to the congregation that he was looking for a huge man. A tall, godo godo man. <laughs> but he saw a small man. And then he was saying, is it with this man that God wants to do the something? And then something, he was at the gallery, and something said, close your eye. And he closed his eye, and he said, fire came out as I was making my hand like that. Now that man is in our church today. Oh, it's not me that told him. My friends, uh, my people said that the dog, does, the dog said that the people that have a good book talks, they don't know how to sit down. And then the people that are in the watchman, they do not know who to listen to. Now, come back to what I was saying. God gave me the ministry and they came and gave me the details. And uh, the story is too long. You know how he moved me from uh, my job where I was earning good salary and in a city that I love from my childhood. And then having Pijo in 1970 something, having driver. You know what that means? Do you know what that means? That you have a Peugeot car saloon in 1978 and you had a driver. And God said, leave that walk and come to Lagos. 
that I had, I had left. You see, as I was coming from the airport, I was, I was offended. Well, not, not all the rules are bad. And then he stopped me like this. I was saying in my mind, I'm returning to, I'm returning to my village. <laughs> I will return to, the, to our mom from there, I administer the church. One of my friends came there the other day, and my friend of old, 1975, he said, Pastor Lotius, you can stay here and run the church. Can't waste my life in all this year, year, Janglova city. And then that is where God brought me, and I suffered all that thing, and then talked to people, and then they became born again, and we were persecuted, and then... Uh, we, we, we insisted, and then the watchman, watchman began. Listen to me, and I, we prayed for three years, two and a half years before the name was given. Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Now, this church that you are talking about, that is given this thing that we have read, eh? in Isaiah 49, 5 and 6. And now, you know the other old scriptures that show our ministry, a three-fold end-time project. I think you know it, you have the book. Now, this ministry has the purest of foundations. What did I say? Go and bring any ministry that you know and put it side by side with Watchman and ask the Lord. This ministry has the purest of foundations. And then, I want to tell you something. Don't kick against it. What did I say? Don't kick against it. It's a prick. It's a reinforced concrete wall. Don't hit your head on it. Because it will splash your brain. Did you hear what I said? Don't kick against it. Nobody can scatter it. Nobody can scatter it. Nobody can make the watchman not exist and not reach where I am going. Nobody can make the ministry not be achieved. If all of the people in the watchman move now, I will not, I will not cry. God will raise other people. Because I know the truth. Don't kick against it in your interest. Don't speak A or B, bad, concerning this ministry. That's what God said to Lebanon. Don't say a or B concerning Jacob. You will not say I didn't warn you. Don't go against it. I'll prove. You don't go against it with your mouth. With the things you write. We are going against uh, Aloysius. You go against me, you are wasting your time. You go against the watchman, listen to me. Ah, okay. Somebody, I will bring take thousands of people. Watchman, there, can't we? And what we want to know is what foundation are you having? Is God there? Don't kick against the watch. I've told you what the watchman is, what he's doing. God knows that there will be the lapidation. And then he raised a movement and put it on the and then raised it with pure with the purest of foundations. You asking, why do I say that? I didn't quarrel with anybody. I didn't disobey with anybody. I didn't say, why didn't you allow me to preach? And then I, I moved out in offense and began church. Why didn't you allow me to manifest a gift? And then I moved out and carried some bread and started church. I did not quarrel with anybody. All the people that led me in church since the last 44, near 44 solid years, following Jesus bumper to bumper, and no backsliding one hour for 43 
plus solid years. No backsliding. Backsliding is not in my dictionary. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. If you say a claim, I make the claim one million times more. I didn't quarrel with anybody. I was led, the first lead I had was uh, not from Igbo land, was a Bible person. And I gave him every respect. The fact that uh, I was sleeping on the same bed with him did not make me to, no, to disregard him. He allowed me into his house when I came back. And I was sleeping on the same bed with him. And then another person led me was a woman. And one of the days he rebuked me and I didn't say, what? Oh, this little girl that is a school certificate holder when I am a one survey in assistant. How can you talk to me like that? Nothing like that. You know what happened? Being a, 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 the leader of the, uh, the ministry I was into, and then they were told to make sure that everybody that is, uh, that is under you is born again. So, this coming Saturday, bring all of them, architects, engineers, everybody, uh, whom you are using for evangelism, and interview them, and so that they can prove that they are children of God. And we arrived. First confessor. And that day, we in Saturday, I had an appointment. I was a one surveying assistant at GCAPA Limited. And this person was a school certificate holder. And then, this brother who was before me, this brother was before me, and I was here. And then the time of my appointment with the company, gave to me or something like that, was approaching. And then I pleaded with these two brothers, told them my situation. Allow me to go and see her. And these two brothers that were before me now allowed me. So when the person that she was, being in, that she was interviewing now came out, these two brothers had already allowed me. And then as I approached, she saw it. He didn't ask me why. He didn't say, did they give you permission? He said, Brother that is impatience. Ah... I became offended with myself that I should be associated with impatience. I didn't get angry with her. I went and sat down and canceled the appointment. And from then I was led and led by people and all of them are my friends. So, what are you then talking about? So, then you put me side by side with the disobedient person and we are the same. And we're answering apostle. Which apostle? We're answering man of God. Who told you? You do not know that God cannot be bribed. You do not know that God is looking at every person's conduct. You do not know that Aaron was senior to Moses. You do not know that Miriam was senior to Moses. But God saw qualities that were not there in Aaron. And were not there in the rest of Israel. And he saw a man, the meekest of man, and took him. So, God. Anybody that is saying God is calling you, I'm a pastor, I'm an evangelist. What is your qualification? So, you have seen the nature, the calling and the nature of the ministry. The ministry has the purest of foundations. And the man followed the purest of things, obedient and order. And that's that. And now here we come. Now, and we are going, and we are going. And we came to these, uh, these bloody times, these dangerous times. Now, my friend, take your time. Don't ever deceive yourself. Don't ever deceive yourself. Listen to me. Let me read you about what God said concerning Abraham. He said, anybody that curses you, I curse him. And Abraham was a man. Right or wrong? Anybody that curses you, I curse him. Anybody that blesses you, I bless the person. But Abraham was a man. Why? Because of the nature of Abraham, because of the ministry that he gave to Abraham. And the ministry that Abraham was, was 
to execute. There is no time. Let's uh, show a few things. In Genesis chapter 12. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 12. And uh, from verse 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy half house unto the land that I will show thee. Now I make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing, and I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Oh my God. Now, let us go to read in Joshua, and hear something that is stated there. Joshua. So we can join it with uh, where we have read now. Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. Let's read. From verse 1. Now after the death of Moses the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' minister, servant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead now, therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the soul of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness of this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, or the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea. Mediterranean, toward the going down of the sun shall be thy coast. There shall not a man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. This Joshua now moved the people, and look at what happened when he had moved the people, commanded uh, the tribes uh, to get ready. Look at what happened in verse 16. And the answer Joshua saying, All that thou commandest us, we will do. And whithersoever thou sendest us, we will go. According as we hearken unto Moses, no things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord God thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth reveal against thy commandment and will not hearken unto thy words, in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be that. Strong and of good courage. Why did they say that? Why did the children of Israel say that? They said that because they saw how this man followed Moses and how the Moses gave over the mantle unto Joshua. And they said, if anybody does not listen to this person that has taken over from Moses to lead us proper into the promised land, that person will be put to death. Now listen to me. They also said it because they knew that Joshua was now the apostle. Joshua was now the what? The apostle of the journey to the Canaan land. Who is an apostle? Who is an apostle? An apostle is... The person that God has designed a program, like he has designed a program, designed a project with the watchman, and then he called somebody and said, you have been elected to spearhead it, and it does not elect anyhow. That person is the apostle. He is his representative. He is his mouthpiece. He is a person that he will tell how, the, how you people will go. Are you coming to this church? Look at me very well. You may not have known me, but you are knowing me today. I am the apostle of the watchman. Catholic, charismatic, renewal, movie. This man. He is the apostle. And who is the apostle? The apostle is the man that has the power of attorney. What is the meaning of power of attorney? Now, power of attorney is that somebody looked at you and saw your education and saw your experience 
and saw your loyalty and saw your faithfulness and saw everything after assessing the something he said now this business that i have with so 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 people this thing project that i have with so 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 people you are my representative you are me so go and deal with them as i will deal with them what you say will be regarded as what i say then you have become uh, he has given you power of attorney you have become an apostle did anybody understand what i said yes, now he has great regard for you and he tells you what to say and gives you gives you gifts listen to me gives you gifts the apostolic gift some people are in trouble when people speak in tongues and then you are, la, 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 you are running around when people say ah there is somebody there that is having run his stomach and then uh, i pray for you and then he pray for you and then the running stomach st stopped and then then i don't just came here and i didn't say there is somebody that has running stomach i didn't say anything i said everyone that is here you go home all your matters are over because i didn't say ah there is somebody here and because you don't understand who the apostle is then you go away and your troubles will follow you because of your lack of understanding are you following me yeah. listen to me there are people that god gives trances trance is for babes yeah and god speaks to them whispers to them give them idioms they are that fantastic not everybody has uh, that privilege i've told uh, some uh, pastors i said you have that that's wonderful privilege but listen to me i don't have trances the time of trance is gone and i want to inform you that i am the person that god gives information as to how the watchman will go if you don't receive it you are on your way to erring listen to me if you listen to your immediate pastor wherever whichever location of the watchman and you like him more than me and you like his words and what i said does not mean anything to you you cannot go to heaven from the watchman you wouldn't say i didn't tell you let me say it again in case you don't understand if you are listening to i am not talking part because of here i am talking generally are you here even if you are coming for the first time you ought to know the truth i said i am the apostle of the watchman the making is not yours and you don't have none of them has my qualification the same pastor of lagos is fantastic he's a doctor and left it to serve god but he doesn't have my sacrifice and there is no way god will leave me and begin to tell him how the watchman will go it's not possible he knows it not to talk of now junior junior pastors so all of you you are so excited about uh, your local pastor and then you don't listen to what i am saying i am telling you you will not go to heaven from the watchman from the watchman if you want to go to heaven you get out to some other place where you will listen to the apostle truth be told and this is hard truth and i need to say it if now for any reason now you don't like my word 
But you like the word of your immediate pastor. Now, whatsoever that created it, he has made you become followers of Absalom. That person has become an Absalom, and you are followers of Absalom. In the sight of God, truth be told. So you hear the truth, so you know what to do with the watchman. Truth be told. You couldn't be there when Moses was there and you are listening to Aaron. All the people that refused to listen to him, the Lord said, all of you will not enter the promised land. I will make the journey was for 40 days. And I will make the journey to be 40 years. One year for one day. So that all of you will perish. And all of them perished. Excepting those that listened to Moses. Simple and short. That is the God we are talking about. You better know the truth. I don't have time to read you where he was accusing Israel. In Hosea chapter 4. And verse 6 or verse 7 or verse 5 said, You don't want to follow the truth. You don't want to know the truth. You don't like truth. You don't like truth. But I'm now telling you truth. But I'm now telling you truth. It is me because I'm not backsliding. And there is no backsliding. You know, in my dictionary. If you like as a woman, come and visit me and then remove your dress. What I will do, I will use my leg and kick you out from the, from the, from the room. Simple and short. Did you hear what I said? Yes, sir. That's what I will do. Uh, if not that God will be offended, I will give you an uppercut. <laughs> and break your teeth. So you want to spoil my life and spoil my ministry. Listen to me. I'm not interested in women that are not my wife. If you like, be naked. What concerns me with that? I follow the Lord Jesus Christ. 44, going to 44 solid years. Bumper to bumper. That was my choice. I didn't come from heaven. And why did, does God not recognize that? And all the losses that I suffered. And one of them was so painful. And I was asking the Lord, what evil did I do? And then he, he asked me a question. What evil did John the Baptist do that made them take away his head from his neck? You have the pedigree of seven men of God put together. Tell me, does your local pastor have the pedigree of seven men of God put together? God told me I have the pedigree of seven men of God put together. Listen to me. Anybody that thinks evil of me, that day he's dying. I have said it. You think I'm joking. You think that I'm intimidating the people. Because we need to be told about the apostle. Have you read us of Apostle chapter 15? When some people came to the new believers and said, you must keep the law of Moses before you can be saved. Have you read it? Time has failed me. Go and read it. And then Paul and Barnabas were sent to Jerusalem. I read you. I read you what the elder said. What James said. The people that had Jesus. The people that had interaction with him. I read you what James said. And when he said, he said, my sentence is this. My decision. My what? My judgment is this. This is it. This is this. And then, okwari, otito. You people go. Take that decision. And they took it. Praise God. Amen. That was the apostle. Let me read. Now, all the people that put this kind of tile here. Now, let me tell you something. That is to show you that you are babes. They don't put slippery tiles in the toilet. They don't put slippery tiles in, the, in this kind of place or on the floor of a, of a place where people are gathering. You don't put slippery tiles. You don't put glazed tiles. Don't put them. But I know it. Because I'm a builder. 
Did you see how the thing works? Yes, yeah, the thing is shining and you think it is good. No, it's not good. You don't put ties where people call slippery glazed ties. You don't put them. You can put them on the wall because you don't stand on the wall. But you don't put them on the floor. On the floor of the toilet, you don't put glazed ties on the floor. You put ties that are, have that can hold that will not sleep. So, by the time I return to this place, you must have removed these ties. Yeah. That's an evidence. That's how to show you how somebody knows something and somebody doesn't know anything. You put it and it's glistering and you think it is good. Mark and eat him, mom. Little children that do masquerade. Come on. Come, house of apostles. Let me show you the position of the apostle. Hallelujah. House of apostles, chapter 15. Trouble has arrived because some people came and uh, with, uh, with, uh, because they were lacking knowledge. They said, you people must, uh, must keep the law of Moses before you can be saved. As of Apostle chapter 15, and a certain man which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, they said, ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and uh, disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, that's about this question. And they went. Now look at what happened. And uh, in verse uh, 12. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul, declaring what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. And um, after they had heard their peace, James answered, Hallelujah. You remember James, Peter, James, and John? Do you remember Peter, James, and John? Do you, do you know who are the people that went to the Mount of Transfiguration? Yes. That's why Peter said, We have not followed a cunningly devised fable, but we were eyewitnesses because we were with him on the mount where that bar came that voice from excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased hearing him. Who could have said that? Could any other person have said that? Barnabas couldn't have said that. And then James rose up. Listen to me and hear what he said. Now after that they had heard their peace in verse 13. James answered saying, men and brethren hearken unto me. Simeon, that is Peter, had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name, and to disagree the words of the prophets, as it is written, After this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is falling down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up, that the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, said the Lord who doeth all these things. No known to God that all this was from the beginning of the world. Wherefore my sentence. What is the meaning of sentence? My decision, my judgment is as follows. That you will trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. But we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood. And then after that, that was the end. And there was peace. And the people that were sent carried the message and went and gave to those people. And that was the end of it. Listen to me. Listen to me. When Joshua was uh, uh, coming down from the mount with uh, Moses. Are you there? Are you there? Only Joshua was allowed to come closer. The rest of the people were not allowed to come Moses went to the presence of the Lord 40 days, 40 nights. Only Joshua was allowed to come closer. And then as they were coming down, now these people had waited. Aaron was down there. Aaron was a prophet. Aaron was a priest. Aaron was senior brother to Moses. He didn't know what Moses knew. He didn't have the privilege that Moses had. He didn't have the exposure that Moses had. That's the point. He didn't have the experience Moses had. 
Aaron was a babe to Moses, but Moses was a babe, um, physically speaking, unto Aaron. Listen to me attentively. Do you mind I tell you this before I come back to tell you what happened? A number of years ago, I went to the village, and then they had had a rift. When the rift started, and I came into the midst that is in the, in the kindred, and I came into their midst and the trouble was so much and this person belonged to one congregation another person this person belonged to the people that serve at uh, that said that they're witnessing God and then this other person belongs to people that are in the church charismatic charism this other person was a catechist this other and they were quoting scriptures every one of them every one of them was quoting scriptures now when I arrived I said oh Tito Nobody should touch this Bible again. Nobody among you should quote scriptures because you are not qualified to quote scriptures. Now, you don't go to this man's house. Why are you quoting scripture? Only me go to this man's house. And I am the only person qualified to quote scriptures. And I turned to the catechist. And the catechist is 20 something years or 20 something years or 15 to 20 years older than myself. I said, you are a babe as far as Roman Catholicism is concerned. You are a babe to me. And he didn't say a word because he knows truth. Did you serve mass? Did you live with them? Do you know what I know? Do you know the meaning of in tribal at ad altar a day, a day in quilitificat you went to me? You know the meaning? Spera in Deo, Quanium, this and that. Do you know? I know. So, and you kept quiet. So, here we come. Moses was uh, with uh, Joshua. Aaron was a babe. And then they pressurized the babe. Are you there? Yes, they pressurized the babe. And then he did the, the obscene thing. And then molded them the calf. And then as they were coming down, God has seen it and said, get back. Moses, the people you brought out, not me. God denied them and said, you brought them out, it's not me. The people you brought out from Egypt, that corrupted themselves, get you back. And then as they were returning, and then there was dancing and jubilation and then making noise merry men. And then Joshua said, there is commotion in the camp. Are you there? Yes. There is commotion in the camp. They are fighting with one another. And then the person that has experience said, the noise I hear is not the noise of people who are exchanging blows. But he was not in the camp. It's the noise of people who are jubilating, making merriment. That is uh, how the apostle behaves. Apostle Paul, when that woman that had a marine spirit, that had the spirit of divination. Oh, praise God. Amen. And now was saying, ah, this, are, you know, previously, he had been doing divining, Abraham, divining, and they were bringing money, and they heard her high, and money was being, you know, in Acts of Apostles, that is not supposed to, after 15, I won't have time to read, but I'm telling you the story. Don't you know the story? And then, when the apostle came, apostles came, Behold the man of God. True or false? Who came to bring us the word of salvation? True or false? But the apostle saw the trick. But the apostle saw the trick. Now, if apostle Paul did not do anything, this woman had been doing divination. And now people in their motives have been following. And now these men have arrived. And then this woman has said that these are men of God. And these men have also, motives have known that these are men of God. Now if apostles did not do anything, now when the men of God left, what will happen? More multitudes will follow the woman and then you will not tell them lies. And apostle Paul said, I know your game plan. It is within me. I know your game plan. I know your game plan. So, 
You, this is the trick you want to play. Now that spirit got out from there. That is how the apostle is equipped. If you come to me and you tell me blah, 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 blah. I, I may not need to ask you questions. I will know whether you are born again or not. Simple. I will know whether you are born again or not. Unless I didn't see you didn't come close. I will know whether you are born again or not. I don't need to pray. So then, you have to listen to what the apostle of the ministry is saying. What is telling us that God is saying? That is what you need to take. If anybody is chastised, and then the person comes and begins to and then talk every post, say many, many things. And people that, people that are people that know nothing. Listen to me. Oh my God in heaven. What am I going to tell you? If you want to remain in church and go to heaven, you must be selective in the choir here you know what somebody can come and put put some virus inside their mind and tell you did you see what they are doing the washman the mash makers you see that this girl this girl uh, that the person that should have married this girl is also brother and now but you see the way the the the, the turned it and now it is this social brother. It is because of this brother and the pastor are from the same town. And you believed. And you believed something that you cannot investigate. And you believed. And you go to town with it. You will damage your life. They don't remain in church like that. You don't believe what you cannot investigate. You don't run to town with what you cannot investigate. Is it clear? Listen to the apostle. What did the prophet say? Look to the hole from where you are here. Look to Abraham. I am the Abraham of Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. If you don't accept it, if you don't accept it, my counsel to you today is take your Bible and find your way. That's my counsel. So that you can go to somebody that you will listen to and possibly go to heaven. Here, I want to finally tell you that all the new, 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 new things that we see in the present day, sinning and um, doing miracle having bad foundation and church standing on wrong terrible foundation and church going on listen to me i cannot be deceived are there no people that started long ago i won't mention their name they don't believe that jesus christ is god and they have been there for centuries you know whom i'm talking about they don't believe they do more evangelism than we do and but they don't believe that jesus christ is god for them jesus christ is one of the angels created as one of the angels that's what they believe are they not progressing if you go to canada you see them they go one-on-one -on -one evangelism if you go to britain if you go to israel if you go to anywhere they are there they are progressing progress does not does not guarantee genuineness that you are progressing does not guarantee genuineness. That you are progressing does not guarantee genuineness. I say it again. That you are progressing in what you are doing right now does not guarantee genuineness. Are thieves in Nigeria not progressing? Arm yeah. robbers are they not progressing? Yeah. Halos are they not progressing? Church, are there not plenty of churches progressing? Ah, some got the anointing through sin. When I announced it, anointing through sin, that is a message for another day. They have gotten the anointing through sin. Somebody will be saying, Ah, 
you're wanting all of them to uh, uh, so that you can you can rule over them i don't want to rule anybody my life is not when i gave my life to jesus i didn't give my life to jesus to rule anybody to be a pastor if i had my way i would resign i've been telling our senior pastors that somebody should come and take over if you if you if you think you want to take over and i will not come and begin to say what kind of thing is this no opposition nothing like that whatever you said that we should do so long as it is not seen i will do it that's true now so if you think that god is leading you prove it and uh, you become the gs man or woman you become the gs and i will not kick so then if somebody has this kind of mind and is real and god knows it now you compare him to somebody that says that you must not take me out from this place i am standing here i planted a bottle here i will not live here until the bottle germinates see i am not talking about this particular place i'm talking about the watchman now listen to me if anybody is thinking hi uh, our our algiers you see algiers is not very healthy uh this and that who told you ah uh, who told you and then listen and you are praying let the just not die let the just not die good prayer is good but but whether you pray or not but it's good that you should pray after all apostle paul said pray for me it's good that you should pray your prayer is working but i'm saying whether you pray or you don't pray <laughs> my living though is not attached to anybody's prayer did you hear me <laughs> you see me <laughs> i went to a burial i senior somebody senior somebody senior somebody to senior other person and that person before he died he was like my grandfather he had been born again at my hand by backslid and then i went to the burial just last friday and as i was sitting down where i was sitting down little little children that that uh, I was 30 something years when they were 11. I didn't recognize them. Their hairs were like Isiobu, Obu. You know that the bed they call Obu. I don't know the men in English. You know, I couldn't recognize them. Shy. And then I saw a lady and I said, I don't recognize you again. This girl was nine years when I was 30 something years chai ah when i came back i began to rejoice and then they came to me this one come that you are looking fine i said me even that me that i'm stressed i travel so much and um you know he said but you are looking young i said truly and then another person said you are looking younger than when when you came to my house in 1990s <laughs> ah. Are they really talking truth? Ah, if this man, okay, okay. Thanks be to God. This is not entertainment. The apostle has spoken to you, yes, and you you better seek to hear what the apostle said. Go and take the messages of old our pastors that are making waves listen to me go to go to some places and they go to our archives and then play the messages and they even remind me of the messages and i get old in the recent past listen somebody posted in the so-called social media and i was asking about alcohol do you know that even pastors children didn't see anything in in taking alcohol and they were making nasty comments and one of them called me on phone and said daddy look at what people are saying including pastors children 
And then I said, okay, these are babes. I'm going to read you the verse of scripture that I read, I read the person that called me. And then I now began to dish out the kinds of wine mentioned in the Bible. Three kinds of wine. 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 Strong drink. The first kind is a fresh grape juice. Pressed fresh. That's wine. Second one is the wine that has fermented and as a result of the fermentation it contains alcohol. Then strong drink is the one that has some additive and then it becomes shocking. And then it is commanded that Levites, princes, priests, judges do not take either wine, the one that contains alcohol, or strong drink. And then, and now, I, as I was talking to the person, I said, now, now, in, in the book of uh, Revelation, Jesus Christ has made us princes and priests. So we should not take alcohol. Now, and that lady that was talking to me, now began to read from a Bible study. He didn't know that I wrote it. Because somebody had counted all these people, all these ignorant people that were wanting to justify alcohol. And then countered it with posting that outline. Oh, this outline was written in the 1980s and on my knees for four days. So if you are wanting to know about alcohol go if you want to know about the working of the world go to the archive and go and, and go and take and go and take balance me and don't let babe teach babe i end with it don't teach yourself don't let a spinster teach you spinster teach spinster bachelor teach bachelor somebody that came the other day now becomes a pastor and then begins to talk to all the people and post it and post it on the YouTube, this and that, Facebook, Backbook, Instagram, Twitter. And then you are reading. And you are reading opinions. Opinions of babes. Opinions of people that have no knowledge. Opinions of people that do not know the Lord. Opinions of people that do not have experience. Opinions of people that have not walked with the Lord. Opinions of people that have not been stretched by the Lord. Opinions of people that have not been given some afanico by the Lord. He has not tested you. And you, and you come and now become, become pastor. And you want to you want to tumble the minds of the people? He has not tested you. You know nothing about sanctification. You know nothing about baptism in the Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, there is some ego inside you. Meanwhile, there is some kind of person that you were married. It must come from your town. There are people that are in this watchman. Eh? God does not lead them to any other person except people from their state. And there are people in this washman. God does not lead them to any other place except people from their town. I know them. I don't want to shame them. Otherwise, I will mention their name. I will mention the state and the town. You know what the Lord told me about them? He said they are schemers. S C H E M E R S. Go and check it in the dictionary. All such people are schemers. When the watchman, this place is not those, those kind of churches that you are talking about. I don't know how they began them. If you want to be here, be here. And if you be here and listen to what I'm telling you and live by it, going to heaven is guaranteed. Making the rapture is guaranteed. Don't let somebody deceive you. I close with Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Go to this scripture quickly so we can close. Praise God.
Ecclesia chapter 10. Are you there? After Proverbs, you get to Ecclesia. Are you there? Now verse 16. Woe to thee, O land. Ecclesia chapter 10, verse 16. Let's go. Woe to thee, O land, when thy king is a child, and thy princes eat in the morning. Verse 17. Blessed art thou, O land, when thy king is the son of nobles, and thy princes eat in due season, for strength and not for drunkenness. Woe to thee, O church. Woe to thee, O woman in the church. Woe to thee, O man in the church. Woe to thee, O under pastor or senior pastor. When the person that you are listening to that is teaching you the ways of the Lord is a babe. It's a child, it's a babe. Who cannot distinguish between the python and the viper? Who cannot distinguish between the feces eating beetle and the yam eating beetle? Listen to the pulpit of many colors. And listen to the people that have information that will take you to heaven. God cannot change. There is no another new generation heaven. As we are seeing new generation church. Where people are polluting themselves on daily note. And they are still in church. Polluting themselves with what they say. Polluting themselves with uh, man and woman. Listen to me, this same Christianity, in the days that I was growing up, we never visited a woman, one, one person, a man, visiting a woman on follow-up. No, must be two persons. Did you hear me? And the same thing with women, it must be two persons. And guess what? Uh, my friend and I were following up a young a lady, very, very zealous, and living in the midst of unbelievers. And then we were visiting her. And talking to her. And the woman was growing. And then one day. She came and brought an information. I don't know whether she was the one that brought the information. Or some other person. And said. That as we visited and left. Now. People in the yard were saying. These are her boyfriends. And when we had that. From that time till now, no more visit. Uh, today, if I take your phones, if I take the phones of people in the choir, take the phones of pastors, take the phones of workers, and I scroll, what are we going to see? Take the phones of married men and married women, what are we going to see? What are we going to see? We are in church. I'm going to heaven. Going to heaven. Now put ladder. So you can go to heaven. Put ladder, long one, and go to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Which heaven? Are you the owner of heaven? Are you the owner of heaven? All the people that have made going to heaven to be sheep, they have deceived you. This heaven, this heaven, Jesus Christ said, strive to enter. Because I tell you, many will want to enter, but they will not be able. Because the restrictions, they will not be able to keep. There is restriction in Christianity. The Christianity that sends you to heaven has restriction. And that is the Christianity I'm, that I am following the watchman. And the Lord spoke to me and said, despite all the things that are happening, stand and stay where you are. And he has said it to me a number of times. And I'm not going to change. If you are waiting for a time when we are going to relax 
and relax what we are doing, and then relax our standard, and relax my preaching, and then begin to say, oh, brethren, let us give our, ourselves a holy kiss. It's written in the Bible now. You know what will happen when we begin that? Now, the young men, as they are coming to church, they must know where to sit, where some elegant woman is. When some beautiful woman is, so that when they say, let us give ourselves a holy kiss, now he will rush to the place. That was, but it's not going to happen here. If you want that, you can go to the places where they don't bother about that, your wife leaving you and you are preaching. Where boyfriend and sin partnership is not, is not seen. Not in the watchman. I am done. Who wants to follow me to heaven? Who? Well, think about it. Think about it. I'm sure of where I'm going. I am incorrigible. You know what that means? Money does not influence me. Gift does not influence me. And I will not be influenced. If my brother becomes governor, eh? this thing that I, I'm saying, that's what I'm going to be saying. If my brother becomes governor of a state and does not, does not bother about the masses, I will not go to his house. My brother, I will not go to his house. I will not go to that state house. And if he gives me any gift, I will not take it. Did you hear what I said? If he does not follow after the masses, and he's my brother. If he buys me a car, I will not ride it. I will reject it. Come on. There is a church that God has set up to turn and then, oh my God. Some people will say rapture. Rapture cannot take place until the work of the watchman has been finished. That's what is keeping the Lord from coming. I am looking for people that are for the vision and for the vision. And if you agree, what belongs to the vision belongs to you. Amen. Cancer has been Listen to me. Cancer has been, been diagnosed in this, my body. But the Lord said the cancer will not develop. And it terminated it. It didn't develop. Don't you know how something will germinate but didn't develop? It had germinated, it didn't develop. And you know what? Diabetes has germinated. And in the night, we are urinating eight times. But I will become, say, what is this? And the Lord says, is it diabetes? That diabetes will not develop in their, in their system. Yesterday, they were persuading me. Let's make a check of blood sugar. I was laughing. You know what? I just was laughing. You want to test my blood sugar? After a while, I said, okay, test now. Just yesterday. Test now. I brought that something, chukum, and then put the blood. You know what he read? 76. <laughs> Little children, their own is from 70 to 80 or something like that. My own is 76. And the person was shouting. I said, didn't I tell you? <laughs> you want diabetes to develop in my body, in this body? <laughs> Listen to me. Many people don't understand what I'm saying. If I talk tomorrow, we have not gone. Let me ask you who did God call? Is it Lot or Abraham? What did the Lord do? The Lord benefit because he was qualified, he followed his uncle. And became a beneficiary for that decision. 
That is how it works. That is the principle. I told my biological children, you see that you are attached to me and you are benefiting automatically. You are in the house. You don't beg me to take, the, take something from the fridge. You don't beg me to enter the car. You don't beg me for this. Right or wrong? Right. That's true. Because they are what? Biologically attached to me. And then I tell them, you must be spiritually also attached to me. So that the thing that belong to me in the spiritual will belong to you. Now, you are not my biological children, are you? But you are not my biological children, but you can be my spiritual children. And whosoever that accepts the vision and accepts the preaching and the truth that I am selling, buys the truth and you didn't sell it, you have become my spiritual child. And what belongs to me belongs to you. I end with this testimony. Did you hear that after the hilltop encounter, did you know about the four girls that were kidnapped? Do you know about that? Did you hear that prayers were made as if I knew something was going to happen? And in the rock chapel, I was shouting and praying, let the Lord mesmerize the people that will mesmerize you. Amen. Let the Lord deal with those, anything that want to deal with you. Amen. And I was screaming and praying and shouting. And then, mistakenly, somebody took them to worry and entered the only God knows who vehicle. And then they attacked them and took four of them. And in that night, they blindfolded them and walked inside the bush for six hours. And for six straight nights, rain was calling upon them on one dress. No canopy, no umbrella, all the mosquitoes, all the rain came upon them for six days. But do you know what these girls were doing? They were rehearsing the prayer. Come together and they hold their hands, rehearsing the prayer made. That's what they were doing throughout. Until the kidnappers will want to come and rap them, and something will happen, and they will be, uh, they will begin to oppose themselves. At a point in time, they said, these people are counterfeit people. Yes, they are counterfeit because they are children of Aloysius. <laughs> now, listen to me. When you are not rapable, are you not counterfeit? Shouldn't you like that counterfeit? Until somebody strayed into that camp. And they showed them the heads of people that have died. In that shrine. They showed them the heads of people. Until somebody strayed there. And happens to know the boys. And then began to plead with the boys to, to take whatsoever the parents of these children with. Eh? And then was even wanting to befriend one of them. And the, the girl said, no, I'm a Christian. And then he said, eh, okay, I want to marry you. He said, no, you cannot marry me. He, said, he had proposed to marry the girl so that he can plead with these people to release her. He said, no, you can't marry me because I'm a Christian. And be besides, I cannot leave this my, my sisters and go here, go from here. Until the man's intervention made these people leave them. And the man was the man that brought them out and said, now, if they release you at so time, don't leave. Because if you leave, another group is going to catch you. And now, then when they eventually uh, released them, this man took them and brought them to the main road and bought them sail pass and gave them transport money. And uh, nothing happened to them. No raping when they were taken to the hospital. No, no pneumonia after six years. Six nights of rain. They only gave them med medicines for mosquito bite. Because they were rehearsing. They think it's a joke. I'm a child of God. I'm a pastor. I'm a minister. My friend, 
Are you an apostle? I'm a doctor. Doctor, past doctor. I'm an engineer. You came out from school and said, I'm an engineer. Who made you an engineer? You are a popular engineer. You don't know anything. You need to listen to the people that have been in the field over the years so they can teach you. Am I right or wrong? That is the truth. Listen to an experienced man. I know how to follow the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know how to bear when the Lord exposes you to, to some of an, of an echo to test you. And all my children that are ministering and, and, uh, and buying from me and taking the fire from me and giving to the people, listen to me, all those ministers and all their congregation, they are the people that are real watchmen and that are on their way to heaven from the ministry. Otherwise, it's self-deceit. I am done. Washman is a great institution. Fabulous one. Incomparable in its nature and its status before God. If you doubt, go and pray. The last journey I made to the east. The pilot has announced that apart from the brief rough weather around Lagos Airport, that there will be no problem according to the information I got from Oweri. And that visibility is 10 kilometers. That is, you could see the airport from 10 kilometers away. But then, when we were now approaching, and he said, I have one minute to begin the initial descent. Immediately began the initial descent. Shortly after, he came up with, a, he came up with an information. He said, I got information from the towers in Oweri. Heavy rain in Oweri. And I cannot approach the land in such a circumstance. I'm going to hover around for five minutes. To see whether the rain will abate. He hovered around. Five minutes passed. Ten minutes passed. He came up with another information. And said, heavy rain continues. With thunderstorms. I'm going to hover 20 more minutes. If the situation did not uh, uh, abate, I will return you people to Lagos. Meanwhile, it was getting dark. Come and see in the plan. All those people that were wearing, wearing naked women, all of them began to pray. All of them turned religious. <laughs> when he made the first announcement, the person that was sitting by my left was using the camera of his, um, of his phone to video the clouds. But when he made the second announcement, he closed it and bowed down his head and began to pray. <laughs> when he made the first announcement, the person in front of me was reading newspaper. But when he made the second announcement, he closed the newspaper and became quiet. <laughs> Back, there was commotion. And one brother was, was, was shouting. Began to sing, Elohim Adonai. I can't remember the songs. I knew that this is a believer indeed. He opened his mouth wide, singing and praying and quoting scriptures. You know what I did? I just stood where I stood. And asked the Lord, what's going to happen? He said, this plane will land in a worry. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then after a while, I said, Lord, What's going to happen? He said, this plane will land safely in a worry. It will not take us back. But night was coming. And the thing was not abating. So, I began to pray. I said, Lord, you know that sometimes the crashes are as a result of pilot error. 
Let this man not make a mistake. If the, the weather is not a betting, let him, quick, let him quick take us back to Lagos. Before, now the, the bad weather will now occur in Lagos. And as he reaches Lagos, they say weather is not good. And now he will now take us to Benin. And then as he reaches Benin, they say weather is not good. And then he will run, run short of fuel. I was saying all that, let this man take decision quickly. And I hear a voice saying, the plane will land in, in no worry. Then I relaxed. And soon after that, the man said, good news for you. But now, listen to me. If you see the weather when we came down, you couldn't see anybody. And the plane landed smoothly. And then all these people began to sing, hallelujah. They became religious. But if they died, they would have all gone to hell. But listen to me, the plane was not going to crash, but because somebody is in this place. Praise <laughs> God. Can I give you another testimony? Somebody told me, a brother told me, he was coming from the U.S., from New York. And then he was telling me, Daddy, I'm, I am baptized to you. I want to tell you that I'm baptized to you. That's what he was saying. And, and let me, he said, let me give you the proof. He was coming from the U.S. And five hours into the journey, the pilot announced that he has lost contact with the control tower. And that he was not going to depend on manual navigation because that is dangerous. That he was going to hover around to see whether he will get contact. Five hours into a journey of uh, about uh, 12 hours, non-stop, to Lagos. And people, people became as dead. When pilot tells you I've lost contact, and I'm rigmaroling to see if I can get contact. You know what the brother told me? He said he didn't pray a prayer. He said he didn't pray a prayer. He said, Lord, if I die, because of my relationship with... Uh, Yes, the thing will pain years for not less than four years, and the thing will disturb him for not less than four years. Therefore, I'm not going to die. That was the prayer he made, and kept quiet. That's all. Because you will not allow this man to be in pain for four years, so this plane will not crash, and that's the only prayer he made. And then Pilot continued to rigmarole until he got contact again. Does it mean anything to you? Oh yeah, now go and attach yourself to whosoever you want to attach to you. What you see, you take. I'm finished. I'm looking for my children. I'm looking for my children. Listen to me. Those that be my children who have left, they will come back. I said, my own children, they are coming back. And many have come back. The people that are my children. And they are coming back. And many have come back. And if they come back, we welcome them. But the people that are not my children, I will not come back. And I don't care. What you see, you take. Did I break anybody's church? This thing is dangerous. When you see how bold I'm talking, go and ask God. I am the yardstick of judgment. I am the judge. I'm the, I'm, I'm the judge of watchman. I am the judge. Now, you are, you are being angry uh, because they didn't give you position. This man, was he ever angry that they didn't give him position? That is what God will ask you. The person you say you are following. Did you quarrel with anybody? An obedient person. Praise God. If you are coming, this is the kind of church. It's not Janglova church that we are coming to. Come and do what you like. If you want to go to heaven, welcome. If you don't want to go to heaven, bye-bye. I want to pray. For my children.
If you want to be a child of the ministry, you can stand up. I want to sing a song and I pray and bless whosoever that wants blessing. And we hold. Song number 15. Our song book, song number 15. All people that on earth do dwell. Sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Him serve with fear. His praise for tell. Come ye before him and rejoice. Know that the Lord is God indeed. Without our aid he did us make. Where his flock he doth us feed. And for his sheep he doth us take. Oh, enter then his guests with praise. Approach him with joy, his cause unto. Praise loud and bless his name always, for it is similarly so to do. For why? The Lord our God is good, his mercy is forever sure. His truth at all times firmly stood. His truth at all times firmly stood. And shall stand from age to age. He shall from age to age endure. Take note of those last verses. <laughs> you to do so. And that is in your interest. That is in your interest.
Don't set yourself against the watchman because it's very dangerous. The Spirit of God will leave you and there's a spirit, another spirit will enter you. And if you see those that have done that, the spirit that is with them is not the spirit of Christ that is inside me. I tell you the truth, I lie not. The end of the day will tell it. Even take a cue that is learned from the young man that we put here. I can testify he was born again. He was zealous to Lalea. And I've been following him all. And I've been counseling him. You better do as he's doing. Don't think that you know. Don't say, but there's a person is progressing. Progressing with sinful foundation. Nothing will change a sinful foundation unless repentance and restitution. If you don't want to know, keep with your ignorance. You will not say I did not warn you. Didn't I warn somebody until he has lost his family? His wife has run away with children. Another pastor, that same pastor, his wife has run away with children. Another one has married another wife. Fantastic men of God in the watchman. Whom I told. And then they are looking to one direction. What you see you take. Whatsoever any person plants. That is what he will reap. That is the rule of God. I planted nothing in any congregation. I planted peace and followership. And you don't plant anything contrary to what I planted. If you steal from somebody that did not steal to make his money, your sin is double. They don't commit fornication. Either with words in the washman and get away with it. I lived with a young woman for two years in the three bedroom flat. All alone. Nobody was there. But I was a young man. Today, your body is talking and you are going from place to place and you tell me that you are a child of God. You a child of God, really? Want to go to the church where they set boys and girls and they become friends and they go out for evangelism and kiss themselves and commit sin and their pastor commits sin. Is that where you want to go to? And you refuse. Abraham. From 12 to, to 6 to 7. What did you make? I'm asking all those people that are, said they are workers and they are ministers and they are this and that that are in this congregation. The people that said they are watchmen. I'm asking you, are you a watchman? Are you following me? Do you live right? Or are you committing sin and singing in the choir? Are you confusing the people? Let me ask the young people. Now you... You put in the internet, 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 internet. What did you wash yesterday? What did you wash? What are you washing on your phone? In your phone? What pictures are on your phone? I'm asking you. Whom will you call when you live here? Those that are students, what life are you living? This place is a place of holiness. No sinner will progress in the watchman.
in, in Judges chapter 1, when they went and invaded what, that uh, nation, and they caught Adonai Bezek, the king of Bezek. You know what they did? They fought him and arrested him and cut off his great toes and thumb. You know what the man said? He said, many, many kings whom I have caught their great toes after I have conquered them and their tombs. They came under my table and began to eat from the, from the crumb that came out of my table. As I have done to them, so God has done to me. Listen to me. As you do, that is how God does. Now, as I did not do anybody evil, as I did not cause commotion in any church, if you cause commotion in this church, I will be a judge against you before God. Did you hear me? Save yourself and tell all the watchman people wherever they are, tell them to save themselves from this untoward generation. Follow a man that is on his way to heaven. I love the Lord. I love his house. I love righteousness. I love all of you. Listen to me. A lady was brought and he had committed sin. And then because he's a woman and we are, I'm a man and he wanted to tell me the details. I said, no, don't tell me the details. Take your time. If you have, if you are wrong, if you have enmity with anybody, go and settle it. Those of you that are married, quarrel with your husband, quarrel with your wife, and fight. And come and sing the choir and come and be a worker in the washman church. The day where pastors are committing sin and congregation members, women, committing sin. What are you talking about? He is a better person than most of all these people that work. I praise God. I'm going to pray now for whosoever that wants to be my child in this ministry. I want to tell you the vision, the trance I had. And I don't want it to happen to you. A number of years ago, I was waiting for our Dyson pastors. They had gathered at Logos International Secondary School. And I was waiting for them in the house. And I sent for them. And I was sitting in the parlor. And then I dozed off. And in a brief trance, I saw myself fixing an object. And there was a deadline. And I knew the deadline. And then people were bringing parts of the object and I was fixing from the left, from the right, from the left. And we were busy fixing the object because the object would be delivered given a deadline. And when I woke up from the trance, I looked back into the trance and all the people that helped me to fix the object, none of them was a watchman. I didn't know anyone. Now I've been warning our pastors, let this thing not become real. God is showing what is possible. Don't ever think that if you leave the watchman, this ministry will not continue. Who told you that? Who told you that? If you don't bring your money, the ministry will, will collapse. It's a lie. If you want to be part and parcel of this great institution I want you to just signify wash the fans raise your hand up if you want to be part and parcel of this great institution and you want to go to heaven from this great institution and if you see that by the thing that we have said you have heard in any way just call upon God and tell him Lord you are full of compassion 
I won't go in this way again. I won't talk rubbish again. I won't talk against the church again. I won't engage myself in what I don't understand. I will be an agent of oneness in this ministry. That's what you'll be praying. From this hour onwards, agent of oneness, agent of progress, agent of encouraging one another. That's what I will be. Anybody that wants to sow a seed of discord inside my heart, I will not accept it. That person will not be my friend. That pastor will not be my friend. Anybody that wants to tell me anything that is contrary, that damages the image of this church, and damages the ministry that God has given us, that wants to make somebody not to go about that ministry, any person that suggests that is my enemy. If you do that today, I can assure you, the blessings of the Lord that follow, and Abraham will follow you. Today we determine what will happen to you in the rest of your life. God recognizes his apostles and he honors them because he knows that they are faithful. Consider them as the ministers of God, servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of the kingdom. Consider me, I'm a servant of Christ and a steward of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. What I serve are the mysteries and the plain things of the, of the kingdom of God. That's what our Lord Jesus is serving. I don't serve adulteration. I am not a steward of adulteration. I'm not a steward of vain things. And I can never be. And I'm not going to look back until the day there. Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, I thank you because you have seen us, seen me from my mother's womb. You saw me at 25 Richard Street. And on the 16th of March, 1979, you spoke to me. I did not hear any trance, see any trance or dream a dream. When I told the Lord, I want to walk with you, eternal Father in glory. When I gave up that which was precious unto me, blessed Redeemer, you brought me to this place. And all the labor and all the suffering and all the loss, there was no regret, eternal rock of ages. No regret, no complaining of inconvenience. Lord in glory, I thank you. You see all those things and you are counting. Thank you, my father. Thank you for the institution called the Watchman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. Didn't we pray for two and a half years before you gave us the name? Who prays for two and a half years? Today, rebellious will just go and cook up a name. My father and my God. Who wants to compare Watchman to an institution? Lord of glory. Whom did I fight with? Whom did I quarrel with? Whom did I disturb? Whom did I cut away members of his church? Whom did I, whom did I deceive? Precious Lord, Reconate Pelut Mahina Handa. This is a, an institution that has a pure foundation, purest of foundations. The angels know it, Apollyon knows it, Satan knows it, Grandfather. That is the reason they have fought me. But the fighting is vain. The fighting is vain. The fighting is vain. Oh, precious Father, the fighting is vain. 
they are fought. They fought by the, by the strength. The arrow of Joseph was strong. His brethren fought him. They fired arrows. But he, is, uh, he, is, uh, he stood. And it was by the mechanisms that the God of Jacob even has uh, made available. That was because he was separate from his brethren. My father and my God. If I Lord should be separate from the brethren. As I claim. Prove it. Prove it in the life of the people that are listening to me this day. Eternal rock of ages. Prove it. Prove it with some fantastic thing. Lord I bless your name. Lord I do not need to belabor the point. I know what is going to happen. I know what is going to happen. I know what is ahead of us. I know it. What is ahead of us. Glorious and bleak. That is what I see. Precious Father. The two edges sword is going in the world. And going in Nigeria. Precious Father. There are those that are going to know the word of our Lord Jesus when it is late. But let it not be so to them. That is not your will. How long will they be there before they know the truth? How long? Precious Lord. Roma tonight the faith. Don't let anybody be a Judas. Ah. Ah. Jesus continued to talk. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. And the man was wanting to something to possess. Beware of covetousness. And this man refused to beware. Even Jesus Christ said one of you is Satan. To make him to think. But this man did not think. Precious father. Let that be not those that develop the mind of Judas. In this congregation. And in the watchman congregation. Lord, what I'm looking for now is help us of the minister, not hinder us. I don't want hinderers. Lord, I don't want hinderers. Now, this other day we were praying, and the Lord was making us pray and say that you will remove all obstruction. Lord, remove obstruction from the watchman. Remove obstruction. Lord, remove obstruction. Lord, the devil are designed to take some people, save them as wheat, and leave them with chaff. Lord, but I pray, let it not succeed. In the name of Jesus Christ, let them see the good of the day. Let them be children of the kingdom. Let them be children of the watchman. Let the sinner return. For God will forgive. He has abundance of mercy. Thank you because you are the Lord. Thank you because you are the King. Thank you because you are merciful. Thank you because you are loving. Thank you because you are faithful. Thank you for your almightiness. The blood of Jesus Christ is speaking. Speaking salvation. Speaking forgiveness. And one day it will speak condemnation. Unto the adamant. Let it not speak condemnation to the adamant. Let there be no adamant person here. Let the other man person run away. Let the other man person run away. Because danger is coming. Danger is coming in Nigeria. Danger is coming. The man of God has spoken it. Tell it everywhere. Danger is coming. And it will consume people. Tell it everywhere. Say it that the man of God said it. They are kindling the fire that will, will consume them. Lord, I'm asking you, who owns the world? Lord, I'm asking you, have you seen that the world to Satan? Impossible. Have you seen that the church to Satan? Impossible. If you see the church to Satan, you have done evil to Jesus. And there will be commotion in heaven. And Jesus will, will accuse you of injustice. After I have cried, Eli, Eli, Lama, Sabakani, 
and then he abandoned me because I was carrying the sin of the people. And now after that, then you see that the people to Satan. My father, that cannot happen. That cannot happen. Let nobody, let nobody take foolishness. Let foolishness not be a brother. Let foolishness not be a husband. Let foolishness not be a wife. Why take foolishness as your wife? Why take foolishness as your brother? Why eat foolishness? Why eat foolishness? Why are you in this church and foolish? Why will you want to enter hell with all the people that are in the street that are drinking fornication and that are doing terrible things? Why do you want to go to the same place? If you want to, if, if you want to, if you want to go to heaven, make a little step of faith. Don't rush. Just a little. Don't come near the pulpit. Raising your hand unto God and saying, Lord, Lord, I don't want, foolishness cannot be part of me. Stupidity cannot be part of me. I cannot have quarrelsomeness. I cannot, I cannot have sin and be claiming to be a child of God. I can't be filled with talk talk and claim to be a child of God. I cannot be filled with envy and claim to be a child of God. I cannot be filled with immorality and claim to be a child of God. I cannot be filled with deceit and claim to be a child of God. I cannot be filled with insincerity and claim to be a child of God. I cannot be filled with hypocrisy and claim to be a child of God. And then stay in the washman. The watchman is abandoned. And sinners are the ones that belong to us. And abandoned cannot accommodate the water of rice. Neither can the water of rice accommodate the water of abandoned. One is pure. The other one is muddy. I've given you the illustration. Go and ask the people that come from Okeja and Ehal. And I will tell you about abandoned and rice. You must make your choice this day. I have done my bit. God will not find the blood of anybody at my hand. I have spoken the truth. I thank you, Lord. I have spoken it by precept and practice. I have given good example. I have not deceived anybody. No woman that can come and send church, church, church to me that I did that. No brother, no sister. No person can say I hate him. Nobody can say I have marginalized him. I, have, I am partial. Nobody can say I'm hypocritical. I am saying this and I mean another one. Nobody can say that I'm looking for his money. And nobody can accuse me of, of uh, misappropriation of God's, of God's funds. Go and ask the accountant. Lord, I want you to honor me by doing something to whosoever that has accepted all the rebuke and all the counsel and all the hard words and all the soft words. Is there anybody that is saying, Lord, let that be a proof of uh, the authenticity of this man's claim? Is there anybody that is saying that? That is okay for you. It is okay that you should say that. Lord, let that be a proof in my life. Do me this favor. Do me the other favor. To prove that what this man has claimed is true. Open your mouth. And make that. And make that. Uh, make that. Uh, prayer. Lord you hear them. Lord you see them. I bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Spirit of the living God, the executor of God's projects. Thank you, Lord Jesus, our brother, senior brother, and our master, and our Lord, and the captain. Thank you, Father that created the heavens and the earth. 
and all that is in them I demand, I request anybody that is asking for some proof, anybody that is saying to the Lord, do this or do that as a proof of the authenticity of what this man has said so far. Precious Father, that proof must be given. That proof has been granted. That proof has been granted. Lord, from this very hour, from this very hour, something strategic something deliberate something definite has taken place in the lives of the people in their bodies in their marriages in their in their in the thing they do eternal father whatsoever they are presenting in the lives of their children in the life in their own lives precious lord thank you i have the authority to bless and if i bless they remain blessed yes i have the power to bless I have the authority to bless. Whatsoever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatsoever we lose on earth, and I lose on earth as an apostle, is lose in heaven. Thank you, my father. I have the key of the kingdom. And thou didst give on that day, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Oh, precious father, key opens, key opens, key locks. Key opens and locks. Key is a symbol of authority. He opens the door and he locks the door. Therefore, Lord, in glory, anybody whose door is locked, anybody whose door is locked, door to the womb is locked, the fallopian tube is locked, precious father. And the person is saying, I belong to Abraham. I belong to Abraham. I belong to Abraham. And somebody is sick and is diabetic. And he said, ah, how can this man that has had some signs of diabetes and was tested and it is 76, Oh my God, where is my own? I want a blessing from Abraham. Let the person get the blessing of Abraham. Some woman married and has a running battle with your wife. And it's long, not long you began to come to this church. And your wife is wanting to take you out of that marriage and you are damn afraid. And you don't want that to happen. And you are in this meeting. And I want to assure you that that man will not drive you away. And that that man will suddenly turn to be a preacher. Mark my words. Not my words in a short while in the future you will come to testify. That so so day so so thing happen. And then the people will believe the man of God the more. Thank you very much. How is it that you went home recently and clashed with members of your family and then they said so many terrible things against you and when you came back those things began to haunt you and became afraid how come that you are a child of the lion and you are afraid now if you believe that you are the child of this man that has spoken to you all those things that the people said against you at home i made them in oppression right now in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's that. I came here and I saw somebody that has been here since morning. And but the person is saying, I want to see the Jesus. I like him. I want to see him. And then it was like, will he come? Will he not come? And you have been uh, doing that in your mind. But soon he came. He said, hey, I, I, I've seen him. He has come. Now let the blessing, uh, let it be unquantifiable. Let the thing be unquantifiable. Let the volume, 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 the volume, the volume, the volume be great. The volume, let the volume, let the volume be great. The volume of blessing be great. Let it be great. Let it be great. You will know there is a man of God. You will know that my claim is not a lie. That I am an apostle. And the apostle has the power of attorney. And what he does is what God says. You will know it. You will know it by example. You will know it practically. I bless your name. 
I bless your name. I bless your name. Somebody's name is Okudele. Now Okudele is uh, is saying the Okudele Chukuda is let God be the person that gives the final verdict. That is what your name means. And right now, Okudele is going to be walking in your life proper. Now that what that name, that thing that is in your name, now beginning from this Sunday, is now going to begin to walk in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I want you to, uh, to the person that I'm talking about, wherever you go, whatsoever you see, and somebody is saying what is not true, somebody is saying what is uh, contrary to what, and then you say the, the decision is the Lord's. The decision is the Lord's, not yours. The decision is the Lord's. That's what my name says. The matter is with the Lord, and God's word is the final thing. It is the bottom line. And then when you say that, and now you are the person will be amazed what will happen even in the matter that has been stated thank you very much lord in glory thank you very much somebody is saying they have not put my name in the marriage committee will i get married at all and that is what you are asking and the thing is bothering you alive but i want to tell you in three months time without fail your name is going to the marriage committee three months time i am not joking three months time according to my word according to my word that's what you have been saying and if you be the person three months time your name is the marriage committee that you may know that there is a man of god here i bless your name thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much now listen to me somebody you are there and then you are having some debilitating illness and you are seeing what medicine will i take i've taken this one i've taken this one i've taken this one i've taken this one listen to me let me ask you when hezekiah was sick now didn't he try his best he tried his best until the prophet came and then said get set to die and then he said lord i don't want to die i have lived for you i have feared you have obeyed you have lived right in your sight and then the lord said to the prophet go tell him i had 15 years and now what did the prophet do prophet gave some medication so prophet gave a prescription now the prescription i give for your problem that you are having right now it may be looking very funny but it's going to work the prescription that i give is that you just go and take a banana that is ripe banana just a finger of banana and then early tomorrow morning at 6 a.m take the finger of banana and put it into your mouth and said don't say the man of god as i take this banana my faith returns a hundred percent now and you see what will happen and you see what will happen and you will see what will happen and you will see what will happen and you will know that there is a man of god here jb you are wanting word of knowledge but I have told you that an apostle does not need to give you a word of knowledge. Backsliding Eli did not give him a word of knowledge. What he said, the Lord God of Israel, whom I represent, hear your petition. And the woman had the recognition of your inherent mother lacre. In the present day, that's what they lack. Am I Then this is not a church. That is, people that are foolish, who have no insight. They do not know. They do not know who is a man of God. They do not know the worth of the man of God. Ah, my Father, how I pray that the, uh, the eyes of the watchman might be opened, that they may know. So that when they hear that Daddy said, "Did you hear how somebody prayed the prayer?" five hours flight and pilot said that he had lost control and an individual said i will not die because i am related to jesus and if i die 
it will take four years before the jesus will come out of the trauma and therefore god will not allow him that trauma and that's the only prayer the man made thank you very much thank you very much thank you very much lord as i wave this handkerchief this uh, white handkerchief that i took from the altar from this table from this pulpit of many colors my pulpit is a special one as i take it and wave it lord in glory as a wave offering lord let that be a wave of blessing coming unto the people a wave wave of blessing in various areas of their lives various areas of their lives various areas of their lives unfailingly 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 particularly my children those that love my voice that love my preaching that love my person I bless your name for answer to prayers.